Hello and good day, Mike Adcock with an update here on Typhoon Utor. Um, this brief is uh, based on the 9 Zulu JMA advisory package from the 11th of August. Really not going to go in great details in terms of the forecast. Uh, really just kind of more of a now cast looking at what's going to happen, what's currently happening, and what's going to happen over the next several hours as Utor, or uh, going by the Philippine name, Labuyo, uh, approaches the Philippines looking for a landfall early Monday morning. Uh, JMA's 9 Zulu position on Utor was uh, 240 kilometers east-southeast of Casiguran, uh, or about 345 kilometers east-northeast of Manila. Winds have increased to 90 knots, gusting to 130, and it is moving to the west-northwest at 12 knots, pressure down to 940 hectopascal. And you can see on the uh, MSI imagery here, Eye is really opening up. You do have that nice outflow aloft. You do have some isolated showers and thunderstorms really kicking up off uh, off Luzon. Again, conditions are going to continue to rapidly deteriorate across portions of northern and central Luzon. Uh, Taking a look at the uh, this is the 5 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Um, public storm warning signals from Pagasa. Uh, the provinces you see there highlighted in red are in signal three. Uh, in orange are signal two and in yellow are signal one. Of course, continue to follow Pagasa for the latest uh, signal updates. Uh, those will be continuing to change throughout the evening and into tomorrow morning. Here is the nine Zulu uh, Utor track from Japan. Um, again, really not expecting much change here. Uh, looking for landfall. Um, Northern Aurora, Southern Isabella province, and then it's going to continue to track across the peninsula as it heads out towards southern China. Um, Pagas is pretty much on point as well. Uh, again, looking at the Isabella Aurora um, border. Uh, Right now, they're looking at uh, Pagasa is looking at about 10 to 25 millimeters per hour of rainfall. Again, I want to emphasize low-lying areas. You're going to be under the threat for flash flooding, mountainous areas, landslides. Uh, of course, uh, any coastal areas are going to be ha uh, on the alert for storm surges. Um, and although this is affecting northern Luzon, this is also going to be a, another player specifically for southern Luzon and the western Visayas. This is going to enhance the monsoon flow. Um, and we're going to have to keep an eye out for, uh, for small crafts out there. Um, this is not the time to be out there on a boat, especially in southern Luzon and eastern west, you know, and, and portions of the Visayas. Um, while you're away from the storm itself, waves generated from the typhoon will be a factor. So, now of course, and it goes without saying, northern Luzon, uh, it's not time to be on a boat whatsoever. Uh, foregoing the JMA, or rather the JTWC uh, track forecast, but this is the wind radii uh, extrapolated out. Currently, their, uh, their wind speeds 115 knots gusting to 140. Do expect some continued intensification. You can see, uh, you can see there 120 knots gusting to 145 prior to landfall. This area of blue here, this blue circle, uh, signifies the current tropical storm force winds. And you can see that already to uh, starting to affect uh, Cantaduanes, uh, portions of Bicol, uh, Camarines, uh, Norte, and Sur. Um, is starting to enter into uh, Isabella and Aurora. Matter of fact, this was taken at uh, uh, 9 Zulu. Um, I'm recording this a little bit afterwards, about 11 Zulu, 11.30 Zulu. So uh, I, do, I do see these winds starting to move in right now. And you can see this area of red is, it identifies winds of 65 knots. Those typhoon force winds are going to continue to track across uh, northern Luzon. Uh, tomorrow morning. All right, I did want to take some time to really look at the Dvorak analysis here. Uh, up at the top, this is the six Zulu uh, JMA um, analysis. Uh, if you're not familiar, I, I do like to leverage Dvorak uh, quite a bit. Um, this is a t technique to determine the strength of a tropical cyclone 
based off of its satellite pr uh, presentation. Unlike in the in, in the Atlantic Ocean, where where uh, the National Hurricane Center can employ aircraft reconnaissance, um, we leverage Dvorak specifically in lieu of aircraft reconnaissance, and it does a relatively good job uh, in term in determining the uh, current intensity. Um, JMA they issue bulletins every six hours. Actually, they do every three hours. Uh, unfortunately, three nine fifteen and twenty one C is more of a uh, um, an update in low in position rather than a full blown intensification uh, intensity analysis. Um, so this is from Six Zulu. Uh, their data T. This is kind of the the objective based off of based off the technique alone. Uh, looking at a 6.0, the MET. Now MET, this is the model expected uh, um, number. MET's sitting at about 5.5, and what this is really just kind of an extrapolation of what a storm should be at based off of kind of climatology. Uh, it's not going to be very well with a rapidly intensifying storm. Pattern, that's just really, you know, here's a you know, in a book, here's a picture of what a T6 looks like. You can compare that T6 to what, you know, what you see here, and uh, it looks about the same. All right, we'll call it a, a 6.0 for the pattern. That's what JMA did uh, at 6 Zulu. So their final T, this is their T number. They went with a 6.0, and that's based off of the data T and the pattern. Uh, the current intensity, which is 6.0. Um, normally, when you're strengthening, those numbers will be the same. It's the weakening. Uh, where your current intensity will be a little bit higher. Uh, this is the trend deep into one and a half num uh, points over the last 24 hours. Uh, now, National Weather Service and JTWC, uh, these are nine Zulu uh, numbers, and I kind of agree with them. I'll go in more details with this, but uh, basically National Weather Service, their data T came up to 6.5, so did JTWC. Uh, the difference is, and both of them came up with a MET of 6, uh, that's that model, which, okay, gotcha, 6.0. The pattern is where they diverged, National Weather Service called it 6.5, uh, JTWC called it 6, so that affected their final T. Uh, National Weather Service went with a 6.5, whereas JTWC went with a straight 6. There is the advanced Dvorak technique. This is a um, this is an objective computer-based uh, program where it determines what the uh, what the strength of the system is, um, and it usually it gets you in the ballpark. Uh, right now, they're looking at a 6.2, uh, which equates to about 120 knots or 940 hectopascal. Which uh, at least you know JTWC they were going with 115, which makes sense if your final T is a 6.0. Um, so 115, 120 knots, that, that's about a ballpark. The 940, that actually matches up very nicely with JMA's intensity. Um, kind of want to give you an idea of what they're looking at. And what I've done here, I've pulled up the uh, Dvorak enhancement from the National Weather Service, uh, overlaid it on Google Earth so we can do a little bit of measuring. All right, so this is kind of what they do when they're... Um, when they're determining the intensification. And it's actually pretty easy when you've got a storm this strong. Uh, first off, we're going to look for our E number. This is our I number. Uh, what we're looking at, um, we're finding the coldest shade, uh, um, the coldest ring that completely surrounds the eye. And this is, again, using the BD curve or the Dvorak uh, enhancement. Now, in this particular case, all right, looking at um, this cold, uh, cold dark gray. On the west side of the storm, very, very nicely there. Matter of fact, in some portions, I mean, looking at about 41 miles where it extends, but it is pretty ragged. You do have some gaps here of a couple miles there, a couple miles here. Um, so we can't use, can't use the cold dark gray quite yet. Give it a couple hours, and I think we, I think you'll see this can completely wrap around. So we're gonna look at this, uh, this cold medium gray. Now, what you're seeing here, I, I was using the nine Zulu image, um, 
come down here. This is the 1030 Zulu image. And it is quite a bit colder, or quite a more, it has intensified over the past hour and a half. So what I'm looking for is the narrowest width. You can see 39 there, right here maybe, 38 nautical miles. That's pretty much the, the, the narrowest point, 40 miles. So what I'm looking for here, once I get into the blacks, uh, black, white, all the cold grays, uh, I want to get about a, a at least 30 nautical miles. And we meet that with this cold medium gray. So, now for what it's worth, I do want to emphasize, uh, when I was showing you the last slide there, the um, what they were looking at was a white the the cold medium gray hadn't completely uh, hadn't completely revolved around wide enough to meet this 30 nautical miles now it has so we'll start off with a 6.5 now we have to do an eye adjustment so we come into the center here and we kind of stair step our way in into the eye so okay we've got this cold medium gray white black light gray medium gray, dark gray, and we get into this off-white. Now, unfortunately the curve doesn't work very well. I can't, you can't really tell the difference between a, a off-white and a warm medium gray too easily, but at this point it's, it's pretty clear it's, it's off-white because there's your surrounding dark medium grays. So we'll, we'll go with an eye of off-white. All right, now pulling back up for the eye adjustment. What we're looking at, and we there's a Dvorak has a uh, spreadsheet basically where we're comparing the eye color, this off white, to the um, to the coldest ring completely surrounding the uh, eye. At this point, we're not concerned about distance. We're not concerned about the 30 nautical miles. Again, it's going to be the same thing. The cold, dark gray doesn't doesn't completely cut it, so we're going to use the cold, medium gray. Um, off white versus a cold, medium gray adds a half point, and that's what uh, National Weather Service and, and uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center did. Um, again, what they started off with was a off white eye in a white sur uh, surrounded by white is at that time the cold medium grays wasn't cutting it. So that was a 6.0. They added a half point because of the eye contrast, got, got them 6.5. What I just showed you, now that this cold medium gray has intensified more, you're looking at a 6.5, add another half for the eye adjustment, that sets you up with a 7.0. Um, then, then you have to look at the banding features there was a pretty decent one earlier. We've I've noticed that's really fallen apart, especially as it's going over land. So I can't add that 7.0. That's my objective right now, how I'm looking at it. I would call this a data T of 7.0. Um, and that seems pretty reasonable. That's gonna be continued further in, uh, intensification. 120, 125 knots currently. This thing is continuing to strengthen and it still has a few more hours prior to landfall. Right now the eye, um, about 97 nautical miles or about 180 kilometers from the coastline. Um, this system is going to continue to intensify. It really would not surprise me at the 15 Zulu update if JTWC called this a super typhoon of 130 knots. All right, back to our presentation here. Um, Here's the nine Zulu surface weather plots. Do have some heavy rain showers affecting parts of Bicol. Uh, you're starting to see those deteriorating conditions along central and northern Luzon. Matter of fact, let's take a quick look at some conditions. This is at 11 Zulu Diet. Uh, west winds there, 19 knots. It's cloudy with some light rain. That's reducing your visibility down to three kilometers. Pressure you see there down to 1,000. 1.8 hectopascal. Uh, Baler, um, 
pretty similar situations there. 12 knots out of the northwest, four mile or four kilometers rather with light rain, 1,002.9 hectopascal, uh, Casiguan um, over in Aurora province, light rain showers there. Winds aren't strong quite yet uh, northerly there. Uh, pressure though is dropping 1,003.9. And then uh, just taking a look at Metro Manila, this is out of Ninoy Aquino International. Uh, light winds out of the west, three knots, uh, just a little light rain, 1,005 for your pressure there. Uh, of course, continue to follow westernpacificweather.com throughout the night. Uh, several of us are going to be continuing to post there. Uh, follow along on Facebook at Western Pacific Weather and on Twitter at WestpacWX. Um, of course, you can follow along at Storm2K and join in on the Global Tropical Discussion. Uh, follow me at Twitter at Senior Pepper. I'll be posting here and there um, as Typhoon uh, Utor continues to approach the Philippines and makes landfall early Monday morning. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a great day. Stay, stay safe and take care.